Hello and thanks for watching this Cloud9 ERP Solutions video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. In this series of videos of Acumatica 2023 R1, we're going to talk about improvements to manufacturing. So the first one is when we have production orders that are in status completed, in some situations where you've overestimated the materials required for this production order, when the production order is just simply completed and not closed yet, the full set of materials are still allocated, meaning under inventory allocation details, that inventory is associated to that production order. Additionally, any kind of MRP runs might make the system think that you still need those items because they're already allocated to the production order. So what's new in 23R1 is if we click on our ellipse button here, any materials not used, we can set the material status to complete it, and that'll deallocate those materials from this production order, freeing them up for other jobs. So that's brand new. Additionally, and to support this new functionality, if we go back into another production order, and we'll look at one that's released, and we look at our production detail. Acumatica's added the status for the materials. So whether or not the materials have been released or whether or not the materials are planned, we go back and we look at a planned order. You can see again, each individual material has the ability to show whether it's planned, released, there is in process, so which means the material has been partially issued uh, and the item plan for the remaining material quantity has been created. There's completed, the material has been issued in full and no item plans exist for the material, meaning there's no additional demand. And then there's closed, which would happen after you close the production order. So we take a look at this one. You can see that that's closed. And then also if it's been canceled. And of course these statuses will extend out to your inventory allocation details screen where you can look at these specific items and see the particular status that they're part of. Additionally on the production order details, if we go back to an open one or released one, Acumatica has added a new category for replenishment. So this allows us to manually create purchase orders or production orders to fulfill this particular production order. So this could be child production orders, for example, materials that need to be assembled or created in order to make this production order, or purchase orders, meaning materials that I need in order to create this production order. So that's been added and additionally materials category has been added so that we can get right to our critical material, our late assignment. And earlier we talked about setting the material status to completed or open. This makes sense when you're in different statuses of Acumatica. Right now we're only in released. Under MRP, in Acumatica when we want to run our MRP we generate, regenerate our MRP. So we come in here and this goes through the system and determines what production orders need attention, what the dates are, and figures out what our material requirements are essentially. And of course, regenerate MRP can be scheduled and none of this has changed. But what has changed is there's now a history button. And you can get to this history right through the menus. It's called MRP history. And what it does is it goes through and gives you an audit or a log of every time the MRP has been run. So you can see it was run today. It started at 849, finished in the same minute. It looks at the MRP detail count, the first pass, detail plan count. It gives you these statistics so that you can understand things like performance. And additionally, there's also an audit history
that takes the regenerate MRP, that log information, and it gives us that information on a sequential view. So whatever the time, whatever the date is that we've run this, whatever the user was, it's gonna tell us and we can filter that out and look at all this information in one view. Earlier we looked at the regenerate MRP. This essentially does that, but it's sequential to all the times that it's been run. So if we run it again, we come over here and we refresh. You now you can see all the different times it's been run. You can filter and look for particular information that you're looking for. You can filter and look for certain records that you want to keep an eye on. Additionally, if we click on the history button, the previous screen we showed that was new, you're now going to see two entry records here. So better visibility on the MRP runs and the ability to audit all the information. You'll also notice that Acumatica over the last six years, perhaps, has revamped its workflow engine. So if we take a look at our production order details and we look at one, what you see here is this workflow process. Under processing, you can see hold and remove hold. So if we go over to production orders, and we open up, let's say, for example, one here. What does it mean that the workflow engine was revamped? Well, you've seen it in other areas, anything from finance to orders. It's been done over the years. Uh, it replaces automation steps. Automation steps used to be there. Automation steps is gone now from Acumatica. Everything's been revamped. But production order maintenance for example, you can see I can go in any direction that I need to. So I can click on hold to bring myself to hold. My logical button is here. I can remove the hold. And I can release the order, release it to the shop floor. All of these will iterate a different step, a different workflow step in Acumatica and this for this transaction. And you can see all your different processing steps right here and they'll become available as you near those different status processing statuses. Now, if you go over to customization and you show the state diagram, this is where it all comes together. The workflow allows you to see everything here in this state diagram, but additionally, with a little bit of help, you can add additional workflow steps and different conditions that are required to move from one workflow process step to another. So that's the new engine and that's been added now to production. And it's essentially everywhere in Acumatica because they, as I said, removed automation steps, which is the old engine. Another thing Acumatica added for 23R1 is a number of side panels. And you've seen this theme throughout every release Acumatica has the ability to do side panels. You can create any side panel that you'd like. As long as there's relative information to the screen on the left, you could display something on the right. You could do side panels from a generic inquiry on the left, inquiry screen, a listing of records on the left, to a form or inquiry on the right, or vice versa. In this case, we have a form screen, and we want to show something on the right. But but the takeaway is that now Acumatica is doing and delivering some of these out of the box. So when we look at the production order maintenance screen, you can see our details. This has always been a commonly requested thing, right? I'm looking at the production order maintenance screen on the left, which has all the information that I like to see for the maintenance of it. But it's too complicated to show this information. So in the past, we've had to click on another button and open up the production order detail. But with a side panel, we can scroll it over and as we're looking at this on the left, we can see the production order details which gives us our different steps and the materials and any costs that are associated with those steps on the bottom. Additionally, you can see any kind of critical materials you need for this production order. 
And you can see these items are already allocated. So no need to worry about it, but you can see those there. Notice this is the critical materials screen, which you can get to through Acumatica, but you'd have to look up the production order manually. But because this is a side panel, it's doing it for you. But you also get the functionality, the purchase, manufacture, and the transfer from this screen. Functionality is still intact. Here's our MRP results by item. So this is showing our production order and where we can find this item. Where is it throughout Acumatica? Inventory supply is 50. Five of them are getting deducted on this sales order as well as this. And there's a production order, several of them actually, which will increase our quantity on hand. Here's a production order analysis, the dashboard for this particular item showing our quantity complete. We haven't started yet, so suffice to say that this is at zero, but the number of recorded labor hours and our cost variance. If we move ahead, we'll split this screen a little bit less, and we pick another production order that's already been released. Of course, this side panel will update because whatever we have on the left is linked. And we've passed along that production number here. But now you can see a little bit more detail. Quantity complete for each of the steps. This particular production order, if we go to production order details, shows that there's four different steps to making this bat. And when we go back to our dashboard, you can see that those steps are 100% complete. This is the total number of hours recorded only on the fourth step and any cost variances we had in all of these different steps. Looks like we saved money on these steps, but we went over on this last step and this is doing it by percentage. And then the production order supply documents. And there's not much to see here. But if we were doing purchasing, then we would see more information there. And if we go to another production order, here is a component part that we normally buy. You can see where everything's coming from. These two parts are coming from a sub-assembly production number. You click on the hyperlinks to get to it. This is five and five, there's the quantities. Whereas these pumps are coming off this purchase order, this wiring harness and some screw assemblies. They're all coming off this purchase order and again you can open it up right from here. Acumatica has also updated its where used. And where used bill of material is where you can see, you can pick an inventory item such as a board and you could see where it's been used. What bill of material is it being used in? So, and this is the case when you have common component parts that are used to make many different items. So, but what's new about this is we now have a multi-level that you can check. So this shows that this item is created, the parent ID is here, but it's also being used at a level two for this coffee machine. So multi-level results is there. Additionally, warehouse has been renamed to Bill of Material Warehouse as it's specific to the Bill of Material. You have a checkbox to show only active Bill of Materials in case you don't want to see inactive ones. Acumatica has also added the parent item class so that you can know what is the item category. The Bill of Material Warehouse, again, we talked about the Bill of Material Warehouse as being important have the ability to filter by that but here you can see all the different ones there are revision status and if there's been any varying revision start dates or end dates additionally while it's most common let me collapse this to create your labor transactions for a production order in a separate screen so if you go over to labor transactions As an employee, I would create a new transaction here and I would put in all my information, including the production order 
as well as the operational steps. So for, for example, if I pick a existing production order, I can choose what operation I worked on, how many hours I did. So this screen allows me to cut across all different production orders and essentially clock my time in. But Acumatica is also added, if you have the rights, if a laborer has the rights to the specific production order, they can go in and create a labor transaction directly now. So the saving here is that when you do that, it'll automatically add the line of the production order and the default operational step so that you just need to put in your employee ID and your start and end time or the total time. And Acumatica has added a lot of things to manufacturing. One last thing, small thing that they added, you could do this yourself, but Acumatica added an open filter. And this gives you the ability to see all the production orders that are essentially open. What does that mean? Well, that's planned and released. Released to the shop floor, planned, I'm still working on it. So there's a filter there that can essentially give you better visibility or quicker visibility uh, with that baked in filter. So that's it. That's a manufacturing improvements for Acumatica 2023 R1. If you found it useful, please click the like button. And if you have any other questions about Acumatica, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again and have a great day.